Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Twasim and welcome to my derm classes. Our first lecture is on dermoscopy. I'll be taking you through the introduction, uh, history of evolution of dermoscope, uh, the principle on which it's uh, functioning, the different types of dermoscope, uh, as well as some of the basic patterns that you visualize while using a dermoscope. Coming to what is a dermoscope? So a dermoscope is known as the stethoscope of dermatologist. So it's a device with a built-in illumination as well as magnification system. It basically helps us to observe the structures in different layers of the skin. And the striking feature is the non-invasive nature of the uh, technique. It mostly serves as a link between the clinical dermatology and the dermatopathology. So it helps us to narrow down our differentials. Uh, in some cases, it helps us to uh, give a diagnosis and in others, uh, it further helps us to do a histopathological examination and finally come to a diagnosis. Coming to history, so it was in 1663 that uh, Kalhaus observed some of the vessels in the nail folds with the help of a microscope. And later there were a lot of dermatologists who started observing uh, the skin with a microscope and even with an oil immersion. But it was in 1920 that the term dermoscopy was invented by the German dermatologist Johann. Now, what is the principle of the function? So the question is, why is a human eye unable to see the structures that are below the skin surface layer? So the answer is, the refractive index of the stratum corneum and the air are different. So this will basically produce a reflection of the light that's incident on the skin surface, due to which we are unable to see the structures that are beneath it. So what does a dermoscope do is that it basically prevents this reflection helping us to see the structures. Coming to the types of dermoscope, one is the handheld which you can see on the right hand side and the other is the computer uh, based video dermoscopes on your left hand side. So the handheld dermoscope is very small, handy, portable just like an ophthalmoscope whereas the computer based video dermoscope is connected to a computer with a USB and uh, it helps us to give a wider image, a bigger image. Uh, the magnification of the dermoscope can range from 2x, 10x, uh, 40x and um, it can go even up to 100x. Another important uh, concept that you should know is the type of polarization. So there are two different modes in dermoscope. One is polarized mode, the other is non-polarized mode. So uh, whenever we are going to observe a lesion, we need to know which mode we are supposed to observe the lesion in. So, uh, the polarized light helps us to visualize the structures that are more deeper in the skin, whereas the non-polarized light helps us to observe the structures which are more superficial, just like that of a wart or uh, just like that of a, uh, a milia, whereas the polarized light helps us to observe the structures like BCC, uh, dermatofibroma, which has uh, um, evolved from a deeper layer. Coming to various subspecialities. Uh, the dermoscope has been used to visualize the hair, the nail, insects, nail fold capillaries due to which trichoscopy, onychoscopy, entomodermoscopy and capillaroscopy has come in, apart from the classical dermoscopy. Now, coming to what are the patterns that you visualize? So there are vessels, scales, follicular disturbances as well as the pigmentary changes. So coming to basic color patterns that you see. The first is the color black. The color black indicates the melanin in the stratum corneum as well as the upper epidermis. Whereas the color dark brown or light brown indicates melanin in the epidermis. Whereas a gray or gray blue indicates the melanin in the papillary dermis and the steep blue indicates the melanin in the reticular dermis. So it's very simple. Uh, the more superficial the melanin is, the more darker the color will be. Coming to the color red. Uh, it is either due to the increased number or it's because of the dilatation of the blood vessels. It can either be because of trauma or it can be because of neovascularization. Coming to the color white, it's basically because of fibrosis uh, in the dermis. And uh, the color white can also indicate keratin, which can be seen in lesions like milia or in seborrheic keratosis. Or it can be because of the calcium deposits as you can see in calcinosis cutis. So these are some of the colors that you will see through the dermoscope. Black brown, light brown, grey, blue, red, yellow and white. So we haven't discussed about yellow. The yellow mainly stands for the oil in sebaceous hyperplasia or it can be because of dermal granulomas etc. So this is a nutshell of the different colors as well as what they indicate. 
coming to pigment network this is yet another important uh, uh, concept that you should know so the pigment network is normally present in all individuals and it's more pronounced in the skin of color so what does this indicate pigment network indicates basically the melanin in the keratinocytes so as you can see in this figure it's just like a honeycomb so it has the grids and the hypopigmented holes so why this difference so we know in the epidermis you have a uh, retia ridges as well as a papillary dermis so the retia ridges corresponds to the lines and the papillary ridges will correspond to the hypopigmented holes coming to what is a typical pigment network and what is an atypical pigment network now why you need to know this is because this help us to differentiate between a benign and a malignant lesion so typical networks will be mostly present in a benign lesion whereas a typical network will be present in a malignant lesion so initially dermoscope uh, was used basically to differentiate the benign and malignant lesion it was later on that the dermoscope was applied for other inflammatory lesions and non inflammatory lesions apart from the malignancies so the typical network uh, is relatively uniform regularly meshed homogeneous in color and there will be a thinning in the periphery whereas an atypical network is more non uniform with darker and broader lines and holes which are heterogeneous in area and shape coming to what is a structureless area so this indicates an area where there is no pigment network that's called as a structureless area so coming to an image so it's very striking that in these two figures one is non uniform and other is uniform here you can say there is a pigment dilution towards the periphery and here you can see it is more irregular so you can understand this is a typical pigment network and this is more of a typical pigment network now coming to other basic structures one is dots so what are dots these are small round structures of size less than 0.1 mm in diameter this can be of black brown gray or blue gray as we have discussed uh, depending on the melanin and its location so now what is a globule so globule is more symmetrical and round to oval structures which are well demarcated again it can be of brown black or red so globules are much larger size than that of dots so how can you differentiate between a benign and malignant lesion based on these in a benign lesion there will be more regular in size and shape and will be more evenly distributed and mostly towards the center of the lesion this is an image which shows uh, the dots coming to vessels so when it comes to vessels when you visualize through a dermoscope you need to check for the morphology as well as the distribution so coming to morphology it can either be red dots or it can be linear vessels or it can be branched vessels or it can be hairpin vessels coming to the distribution it can either be uniform or it can be in the periphery or it can be irregular or it can be patterned so this is some of the dermoscopic images where you can see the dotted vessels as well as the linear uh, branches coming to what you see in a scale so the scale again uh, you have to see for morphology as well as the distribution so the morphology uh, you have to see whether it is white or it is yellow or it is a dark colored scale and distribution uh, whether it is uh, in the periphery or it is in the center or it is irregular or it's uniform throughout the lesion so these are the things that you should look for in a scale so these are some of the dermoscopic images here you can see white scales here you can see yellow scales so yellow scales mainly stands for the scales that are mixed with the plasma so that gives a yellow color or it can be mixed with yellow as well as white coming to the follicular criteria so the follicular criteria you can see white dots or yellow dots so the white dots stands for the fibrosis follicular fibrosis the yellow dots mainly stands for the sebum for example an empty hair follicle will have sebum secretions collected which gives a yellow color or it can be red dots which basically in indicates a follicular inflammation or it can be a perifollicular white color or it can be a perifollicular pigmentation so these are the different uh, things that you will see when you observe a follicle so uh, thank you uh, for the patient listening and we have come to a conclusion on the introduction of dermoscope dermoscopy uh, further down we have lot to cover uh, in uh, dermoscopy um, and its peculiar features in benign lesions malignant lesions inflammatory lesions application of dermoscope in hair disorders and nail disorders etc which i'll be dealing in the further lectures so uh, i would like to know uh, your comments and doubts uh, about this lecture so please drop in the comment box below so thank you so much